Hi and welcome back to a new video. In the last video, we reviewed the RX 9070 XT by AMD, which is a very interesting card, especially compared to the RTX 5070 Ti. Even though the pricing that we saw after launch was still higher than we wished for, higher than expected. What I didn't have time to test in the previous video was any kind of modification or overclocking to the card. Even though I talked to some other reviewers previous to my last video, and some of them pointed out that they saw big clock differences between the different cards. So a standard card versus an overclocking edition could sometimes be 200 or 300 megahertz under load difference, which is quite a bit. And that's why I picked this one, which is the RX 9070 XT by Powercolor, the Red Devil Edition. The Red Devil Edition is usually well known for having very high quality PCB and also good cooling, which gives you headroom for overclocking. So I think this should be a good card to test this. Is overclocking worth it with the 9070 XT? The Seasonic Prime PX2200 is currently one of the strongest PSUs available and it comes with two native PCIe 5.1 connectors, which allows to even hook up natively to RTX 5090. That is perfect for any overclocking system or high-end workstations. I'm also currently running this PSU and so far I'm really satisfied with its quality and performance. The cables are very flexible, there are also cable comps included and in addition also a 90 degree ATX 24 pin adapter which also functions as a PSU tester at the same time. The fan is semi-passive and even at a high load it is still very quiet. Find all information about this PSU in the link in the description. Quick reminder, in the original review we used this XFX 9070 XT and I ran a remnant to gaming test where I saw a clock of about 3090 to 3100 megahertz under gaming load. Then I compared to what the power color red level is advertised with and that's roughly the same boost clock. The issue is always that the boost clock also kind of depends on your exact workload so there's definitely a fluctuation but it also could be that they're quite similar in terms of the standard configuration. But yeah, let's just plug the card into and see what happens. Obviously, quickly, we have to investigate the card before we plug it in. So first look backplate, because there's one note I want to give, is this is a sample by Powercolor. If you would buy one, from what I know, there should be something written on here, limited edition, something out of 1,500. Because if I understood it correctly, this is limited by 1,500 pieces, and the number would be written on the, pla the backplate right here. Also, that is something, you know, if you look at the cooler. So, the PCB basically goes until here. So only two of the fans hitting the PCB, similar to most recent graphics cards, also Nvidia cards. The third one is kind of this free flow, flow through whatever design. But then I noticed that this portion is pretty much blocked by what I guess is going to be some kind of a Red Devil logo. However, then here we have some ventilation openings. And also, I guess this space right here should be sufficient for letting all additional air go out to the side. But it's, it's not as most of the other cards are designed with a huge hole for ventilation in the back. It's only this small portion. Then also the entire back piece here, what is a little bit shiny, this should light up in red. You probably spotted this already with three times eight pin. Thanks for doing this. This is actually great. Quite short PCB. We have three 100 millimeter fans, especially considering that this is not a high-end GPU. That should be a good amount of cooling, I think. Pretty awesome design, especially if you look at this back area right here. Yeah, I think if you have this in a black and red themed PC, should look absolutely great. Also some small red accents here and there. Beautiful looking card. Also on the back side, as we expected, a Red Devil logo is visible. On the top left corner, there is also a BIOS switch. And according to what's written on the back plate, this position should be the OC condition. That is, I guess, stock, and the right position would be silent, but we will leave it in OC for now. The Red Devil has been running under load in Remnant 2 for about 15 minutes now. And it surprised me how quiet this card is because I noticed a little bit of coil whine, but I only could hear this coil whine because I just can't hear the fans at all. It is crazy how quiet this card is. It makes me wonder if they mixed up silent versus OC profile description on the backplate, if this is maybe flipped when it comes to the, to the direction. We definitely have to check that because 
it's unbelievable how quiet this card is currently running, especially if I compare it to the XFX one. And also to recap this one, we saw about 50 degrees Celsius on the GPU, 75 hotspot, 82 on the memory, but also 3100 megahertz on the GPU. The BIOS profile has to be mixed, right? Because I mean, I see about 900 RPM on the fan under load, which also explains why the GPU is at 63, hotspot at 85, memory at 90. That is much higher. I mean, it's, it's crazy how quiet this card is in this current state. Absolutely beautiful for my ears, but also the clocks are lower. 2980 roughly, that's over 100 megahertz lower than on XFX. I just, I just hope that they mix up and this is the silent BIOS. At least you can see it's in the right position and on the back plate, right seems to be OC. So I guess we just switch it back. I'm not sure if they messed up the OC BIOS, but this looks exactly the same. I only ran it for five minutes, but you can see it's exactly the same direction. Like 900 RPM roughly, this was 63 before, now it's 62. Clock is also roughly the same, maybe even 70 megahertz lower. Interesting, interesting. I switched back to the OC mode, OC profile, and now I'm running 3D Mark Times by Extreme to check if it's maybe also depending on the application if we see higher fan speed or higher clocks here. Just confirms what I saw so far with 92.8 FPS in the GT1. That's about 0.8 FPS less as with the XFX card, which was clocking higher. So that's kind of in line. XFX was at 3100 megahertz roughly. This is 2900 megahertz. Just makes sense that it's slightly lower performance. Yet the card was running still extremely quiet. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure yet if I want to complain about this or not because I personally prefer silent cards. And this is a very, very silent card, especially compared to the XFX, but it's also less performance, which is something I didn't expect, especially switching to OC. I mean, using this as a silent profile, that's actually amazing. It's amazing how quiet this card is, but I would expect at least something switching to OC, but kind of nothing happens. So I guess we have to do it manually. I manually adjusted the fan speed to a level which I personally find acceptable in a gaming PC, which is if we look into GPU Tweak 3, it's 49% fan speed and that translates to 1600 RPM. And I'm also standing like directly in front of the GPU. I'm not sure how much you can hear it or not, but at least to me personally under load in a gaming scenario, that's kind of the, the edge that I would personally find acceptable when it comes to the noise level. And I will just reopen Remnant 2 now and just double check the temperatures. That is pretty much what I expected in an OC profile. This is getting a lot closer to the XFX card now, but still lower clock, 3000 and about 30 to 40 megahertz, which is caused by just the GPU being colder than before, 48 degrees Celsius on the core, about 70 on hotspot and 78 on the memory. That is very similar to the XFX card. I guess if I would lower fan speed to maybe 46%, then I would get in a similar range, yet with a lower clock than with XFX. I noticed though that the board power draw is slightly lower. It's about 330 watts, while I think XFX was running at 340 watts. Then I increased the power limit to 110, which caused the fan speed to drop. It's doing the same thing now. I mean, you can see the, the GPU fan speed is locked at 49%. And by increasing the power target to 110, which increases the clock to 3120, the fan speed automatically now decreases, even though it should be fixed. What is going on with this graphics card? I manually now adjusted to 48 and now it seems to be back at 48. This is strange. There's also another thing we can do and that is lowering the GPU voltage because as you can see, we can't increase it. But if we just try this, nice instantly bumped to almost 3200. I'm not sure, like I never tested anything with this card so far. 3300 almost. Well, let's just pull it all the way. It's crazy. 3400 megahertz on the GPU just by undervolting it by 200 millivolts. 200 millivolts is quite a lot, especially if you take into account that by lowering by 0.2 volts, we also increased by 400 megahertz. 
that is quite a lot of headroom for the GPU. I mean, it kind of makes sense because by undervolting, you're decreasing the temperature, you're decreasing the power draw, so you get a lot more headroom, but it seems crazy what kind of headroom we have in those GPUs. I will just run this for 30 minutes for now to see if there's at least somewhat stability behind this. But so far, pretty nice what we can tweak here. Well, at least this setting didn't pass. It just crashed after maybe 15 to 20 minutes. But I also overclocked the memory, so I will just have to test some more. Minus 200 millivolts was simply not enough. With minus 170, it seems to be a lot more stable. Also, the clock is a little bit lower. But in general, the card behaves a little bit odd. I could increase the memory clock to a certain state, then it acted weird. And also, I just can't overclock the GPU manually. Waited another 15 minutes, this looks a lot better. Now the GPU clock is a bit lower with 3370 megahertz, but memory clock is also increased to 2700 megahertz. Temperature wise, we are exactly where the XFX card was stock, like 51 on the GPU, 82 on the memory, but we are about 300 megahertz higher. It should now get super interesting with the 3D Mark Times by Extreme running in the background because it scales so well with those 9070s. And the result here is 103 FPS. If we are now adding this to our 3D Mark Times by Extreme GT1 chart that we also showed it during launch, it even beats the RTX 5080. That is surprising, that is surprisingly strong. I also decided to quickly run this setting through Cyberpunk because seeing this kind of performance in 3D Mark is already quite promising. And also in Cyberpunk, I could beat the RTX 5080 by only one FPS, but I could beat it. So 53 on 1% low and 66 on average. This also puts it ahead of the RX 7900 XTX in my case. But to be fair, you also could overclock the RTX 5080 by about 10% and then you would not be able to match it with the 9070 XT. There are quite some things though with the 9070 XT that seem to be totally bugged or something. I don't know what's going on, but if we look in 3D Mark Speedway stock condition, well, almost stock condition, we have about 65 to 70 FPS under load. And this is with just a slight memory overclocking that you can see here, power target, voltage offset, everything is stock. And if I now keep increasing the memory speed, you would think with additional 600 megahertz on the memory, you would get more performance. And as you can see, the performance is completely screwed. So we are missing, I don't know, 15 to 20 FPS. And I first thought, okay, maybe with higher memory speed then the GPU is downclocking because it consumes more power or whatever. But like the opposite is the case. The GPU is clocking higher, but the performance is completely gone. You probably also noticed that I didn't touch the GPU clock so far. That is still plus zero megahertz. The reason for that is that it just simply doesn't help at all. I'm currently still running a plus 10% power target, negative offset of 100 millivolts to get a higher GPU clock. And we see, 3150, 3170 megahertz on the GPU. If I'm now, okay, let's get another 150 megahertz out of this GPU and apply it. Yeah, nothing happens. Like nothing at all. It even looks like it decreased slightly. Now we want to take it apart and take a look at the PCB. Big and nice nickel plated heatsink that seem to have good contact to all the important parts. So we have thermal pads here left and right that make contacts with all the power stages on the PCBs. I left the pads on the memory and if we zoom in on the GPU, that seems to be, at least according to the PowerColor website, one of those phase change materials. You maybe also spotted some of those empty spots on both the heatsink and the GPU. So it seems like there was not a super perfect contact between this thermal interface material and the both sides. But I mean, on the other hand, you know, we tested everything and the temperatures look good. We saw like 50 on the GPU and 75 hotspot. And maybe if you would optimize this, then I don't know, it's maybe 73 or 70 on the hotspot. Yeah, I mean, just looking at this, it could be improved, but also we have the temperatures, we tested it, the temperatures looked okay, so I think we shouldn't complain about it. I have to complain though about the unused backplate, so it's just purely for mechanical stability, but it doesn't yeah, serve any thermal purpose, which I would kind of expect at this price range. It's also a little bit of wasted potential. It's a big aluminum backplate, so it should make contact with, you know, backside of the memory or at least the VRMs just place some thick thermal pads in there and it would certainly help a little bit to dissipate more heat. I reassembled the card and just to compare temperatures, I also applied our Duranaut thermal paste. 
And we see only about two degrees Celsius improvement on the hotspot, so it was definitely fine the way that PowerColor assembled the card. I spent yesterday and today testing the Red Devil and I'm fully confused. There are some scenarios like 3D Mark and also Cyberpunk where you get a huge benefit from modifying the card. But it's not really overclocking because overclocking seems to be fully broken on the RX 9070 XT. You can't overclock the GPU because I think it's fully power limited. If you want to overclock the memory, you can do it in small steps and then you just suddenly fall into the performance hole, which for whatever reason is completely fucking up the performance of the card. Like it increases the GPU clock, but the, the performance is just all over the place when you touch the memory. The best thing you can probably do is just under vaulting, increase the power target and don't touch anything else. But that seems to be a great way to get extra performance out of the card and with under vaulting probably also quite healthy for the GPU, you're decreasing the voltage, which is typically a good thing to do. The Red Devil is also a confusing card that perfectly matches it because the silent BIOS is great. It runs very low RPM, absolutely silent, lives up to its name, but then if you switch to the OC profile, it doesn't really overclock, right? It doesn't really adjust the fan speed. You get, I don't know, 30 megahertz higher GPU clock. That's weird. That's not what I would personally expect from the Red Devil, at least in the, in the you know, stock condition. If I would switch to OC, I don't know, let it run 1200, 1300 RPM, it would still be in a good state because this is currently running 1500 RPM. I'm doing this on purpose to show that, it, that there would be headroom and this would still be fine under load in the overclocking condition. So, I don't know. A lot of stuff seems to be untested or not properly tested, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's AMD side or power color side, but this is weird. This is weird. It has potential, but it, it kind of feels broken. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.